For one-man band operations, Skarhøj is the place to go. With the Blue Pill platform we have developed, our controllers, such as the PDC controllers and the switching controller, they can work together seamlessly. Or you could use a RackFusion Live that has both a PDC section and a switching section all in one unit. Or you can be fancy and torture your PDC controller to do it all. And in this video, we'll poke at the PDC Extreme and make it do just that, control your vMix and your bird dog cameras all at the same time. Maybe you have already watched some videos about the PDC Extreme with the bird dog cameras. In this case, we don't want to go through all that configuration again, but we are sort of building on top of that. And the main focus of this video shall be how we actually integrate it even more with the vMix switcher system than we have done in a previous video covering just the PDC cameras. But just quickly, we have a bird dog P400, we have a P240 and a P120 camera here. They are all set up on this PDC controller. But you notice one thing that the camera selector we usually have down here has today been labeled input one, input two, input three, input four, and input five. We are sort of concealing that some of these inputs are actually the PDC cameras. So we're already looking at how the controller is laid out and notice that all these knobs that are related to PDC control, they blank out when I'm on input number five and input number four. But when I'm on input three, two, and one, I'm actually apparently able to do something with them. So let's just quickly check. Here we have control of the P120. On the input number two, we have control of the P400 and the P220 would be on number three. So you see already we are apparently connecting the cameras to some other things going on. And that is vMix. So over here, as I press the same buttons, you can see I'm selecting into my preview either input number one, input number two, input number three, and then four and five. And you have probably already concluded that we are cheating a little bit today because we have been too lazy to actually give you those input sources into vMix here. But I think you get the point that if those cameras had been input one, two, and three in vMix, they would also be selected as the sources on preview here. And that's the main point of this video that we have now preview selection right here. So what about operating vMix? Well, we select our preview, we can make a cut, we can select, uh, yeah, we make a cut here. I select the different um, preview source, I make a cut, I select this one, and I can make, uh, or I select input number four, and I can make, make a cut, I can select input five, I can make a fade. All these things are easily available uh, for me. Now I just see that we have fade to black active, so let's just remove that, probably from our preparations to this video. So, mm, on a PDC Extreme, we have a preview selector here, combined with fade and cut over here. And then if we're looking at it, apparently we have user one, two, three, and four. Those buttons will be assigned functionality of our choice in this video. Then if we look up here, we have something else going on. I can show uh, you in a moment that this is uh, related to audio. We are looking at the levels of the master bus. We can adjust the master bus volume. Let's just do that. You can actually see the fader is moving inside of vMix over here. This fader is moving as I'm using this four-way button to adjust the audio. So even though we don't have an actual fader here, we are able to adjust the audio. We can even do it in course steps. So you can see that now I have enabled course mode by pressing the upper edge of this button. And as I'm pressing the sides of the four-way button, I use larger steps for this one. I can also mute on and off the audio here and I can read out the levels in this end. Actually, the, the master volume is adjusted both here because if I change the bus, these buttons are changed to bus A, B, C, and D. I can also go back with the four-way button. This is the, the four-way buttons are great. This is like an encoder, but it's just on a button so flexible and it allows me to uh, really make very uh, cool and compact navigation schemes on a controller like this one. But I have always the master bus available over here. So that's just a quick introduction to what we are seeing. The first three would have PDC control with parameters on the cameras, menu for navigating the PDC control up here, preset recall on the cameras. You can see these cameras would get into positions as I'm pressing the uh, preview buttons here and um, so on. But as soon as I go to input four and five, I'm apparently working with different sources, probably as um, stationary cameras or uh, some other source, could be a computer source and so on. And that is only related to switching. 
So that was a brief tour of this and now I want to show you how you can configure this because you really don't need to be an expert to do so. You just need to keep your head clear on what you're actually dealing with. And thing number one is we are, we are picking a overall configuration for the PTC Extreme called PTC Extreme Generic PTC Control with video switching. It's not even saying vMix switching because the, the system of choice is something that happens in the configuration here. But it's basically a configuration that thinks, okay, let's integrate PTC cameras with some switcher system. The camera selector is like your input selector. So this is where, if we look here, we have the three bird dog cameras associated with the button number one, two, three, and four, and five. Actually, it turns out that we have six. Where's number six? Well, we have a paging button right here. So there you see input number six is hidden under this paging button. So if I select that one, over in vMix, you'll see input number six being selected. Let's just do this once again. I go here, I select input number six by this button. Yeah, so there you go. If we go back here, you can see that the, um, the first three are associated with a PC camera. In this case, it's a bird dog camera, all three of them. We can also name them. So in fact, if I change this name to, okay, let's say cam number one. I'll just do that. And then I'll exit this field. You'll see this is actually updated right away. Okay, that's easy. Then we move over here and now you see something that is really important re with respect to your switcher system. And that is the tally index and the routing index should follow the input number on your switcher system. This is where this button will route and select input number one in vMix, input number two, input number three, and so on, okay? Then you have coloring of these buttons and so on. And I just want to let you go to that video about the bird dog cameras and the PVC Extreme to see all the cool things you can do in this selector, this camera selector, because that's uh, covered in that video in a pretty large detail. Also how you could add different cameras than the bird dog camera. But what I really want to show you is the additional configurations that is necessary and essential on this one. There is tally forwarding and routing forwarding. That is a uh, routing triggers. That is uh, also covered in a different video on general PDC control with the PDC Extreme. Namely, this is where you will select your uh, switcher system that is associated with the um, switching function. So here we have selected vMix, active program and preview tally only is, um, is selected. And for routing triggers, we have also selected a vMix system route to preview, which means as I am pressing these buttons, I am changing the preview and nothing else. Actually, if you look at this, you'll see that you have route to output, which is one that you would use if you don't want to affect the preview. Uh, on an ATEM switcher, as we have shown in a different video, it would be route to auxiliary channels. But now that we want it to be a switching controller, we are just routing to preview, right? So that's all it takes, that is, to set it up for routing to preview. Then we need to pick the switcher system that we're using. In this case, we are picking the vMix system over the ATEM. So right now, and this could be different the moment you get this in your hands, we have two systems supported, that is ATEM and vMix. If I wanted to use an ATEM switch instead, I would change over to ATEM here, and then I would update in correspondence with that, the tally forwarding and the routing triggers as well to uh, work with ATEM channels like auxiliary preview and program and so on. But in this video, we have selected vMix video switcher control. And that is in fact what happens on these six buttons down here. Okay. That's the configuration that manages these. And that's also what we will override in a moment. So um, there's uh, a few other things you can configure. What is called configuration sizes is actually a way for you to sort of um, play a little bit with how many cameras inputs would you like to have available immediately. Let's say that you're happy, absolutely happy with having just the fade and the cut button, or even the cut button on your lower row. Then the page size of your camera selector is actually the, the, um, the parameter that identifies how many buttons are being used for your camera selector. And if I change that to one, let's try that and just exit the field. Now you see that I have sort of a camera selector that's just, this is selecting the page and I have six pages because I have six inputs and I'm just going through them like that. If I changed it to two, you see now I have two buttons and that would be camera one and two, three and four, five and six and so on. So guess what happens if I change this to like, um, what, 10? 
If I choose 10, then I have only six cameras, so the remaining four slots will be just blank. But I'm essentially overlaying everything that happens on this section here, so I have only the cut button left at the end. Now, probably that's not what we want. We'll just put this back to five, like that. But there is also another number, the presets uh, page up here. And the presets are those available when you have uh, the PC cameras selected on the first three inputs. And you see here we have uh, generally um, five buttons in each page and that gives us four pages we can go through on this button here. But I can in an equal way change that to let's say 11. That means now I take the whole row and whatever I had underneath these six buttons are now being overlaid by this and I have just these two pages. So that's the same thing. But let's just go back to the defaults. I just wanted you to know that there are some flexibility easily available in this super easy to use home screen configuration for the sizes of these uh, paged actions. Okay, the, the mysterious things that happens here around uh, audio is actually what we call quick class. And quick class is a concept that allows you to just plug in configurations for all kinds of things in the Skaho universe on six buttons typically four-way buttons with displays. It's just designed for that. And we have uh, shown it off in a, in a ton of videos where we have controllers that has those six buttons somewhere that would be super easy and desirable to configure with such small snippets. And that's what a quick class is. So uh, in this case, the, the way we navigate quick classes because we have two quick classes added, both for vMix operation and uh, if we click in here, we can see that these are the two uh, quick classes. The one is for audio bus control and the other one is for audio input control. And the way you change between these two would be using the shift key. And now we are on audio bus, we change to audio in. And as I'm now on audio in, you can see that I'm using this four way button to change which input of audio I'm adjusting. And this is the audio adjustment that I'm doing over here. So let me just quickly show you inside of vMix that we are actually doing that. So let's go back to input number one and we see the volume is here. So if I am uh, setting it in course mode, you can see that I'm adjusting the volume of that. I can go to input number two and I can also adjust the volume of that. I can mute it on and off. I can solo the channel, etc. So that is my quick class that I selected audio in. I go back to audio bus and now we are back here. But what I wanna show you is that we can add another quick class and to, to get out of the, um, um, environment of just vMix and bird dog cameras, we could add a device from our network. So let's use discovery and see what we can find. Uh, I think we have a Kumo router on the network, an AJA Kumo router, and we'll select this one and just save. So now we are connected to the Kumo router on our network. That was easy, right? So that's also happening on the home screen. Just connect to devices like that. Then down here in the quick class, we'll now add a new entry click here and then we can select the AJA Kumo and it will automatically populate this with the most relevant quick class that we can choose. In fact, it is the only one for the Kumo router, but it means that I should now have three options. So as I press the shift key, you'll see there's a third one here. And if I press that one and release, I'm now getting into configuration that is related to routing my Kumo router. So up here I can choose between inputs and outputs. Down here I have some presets I can access and then I have otherwise just pages of inputs that I can route to the selected output, which is currently main, but I can change this around. Now we don't have access to the Kumo web interface, so we can't demonstrate that. But I think you get the point that we have this super easy to use plug-in configurations for many different devices. And just to give you an idea about what those devices are, you see we have actually five different quick classes available for vMix. We have uh, for Blackmagic Video Hubs, we have for Roland, OptoCore, OBS Studio, a ton of ATEM switcher related quick classes, etc. So this is all right here and has also additional configuration options quite often like how would you like to set up inputs and outputs for your quick class in this case. So quick classes, video switcher, config sizes, all these things are available right here. And now what we want to do at the end of this video is to show you how can you put your own stuff onto these user buttons. Now, that brings us into the configuration tab of Reactor. And in configuration tab, it gets a little more um, adventurous. This is where it might freak you out, but there are also ways to navigate pretty neatly. So let me just show you how easy configuration tab can actually be. If I go into configuration tab, 
and I enable this little fingerprint, it is going to listen to what I press on the panel. Okay, so I enable this one and I press this button four and that brings up the layer in the system and the inspector on the right side. And you don't need to worry about where that is in a huge layer tree, which can be confusing, but really logical if you think about it. We have made it easy to navigate to that button that you want to, or that um, place where you want to change this. In the inspector, you simply press this edit button to change or to select the parameter from vMix that we want to do. I want to do fade to black on this one. And I select vMix. Now the next thing that I need to do is to search for something. Let's say I wanted to do something audio. I could search audio or in this case, FTB for fade to black. Probably it would also react to fade. Would it not? Oh, I have a lot of audio fade. What about black, adding black in? Oh no. What about black? There we go, fade to black. Okay, so you can search up your parameters. By the way, if you wanna see the complete parameter list, you can click this button and that parameter list is gonna look like this. Okay, so you get this, uh, it's actually a PDF file that you can uh, print, uh, ship somewhere. You can see different versions of vMix if there's differences in what they support and so on. That's all uh, available to you in this parameter list that pops up if you click that button. But now we'll just submit and that, uh, triggers this recommendation. The recommendation is the parameter you have chosen, how do you want the system to, to use it? Do you want it to be a trigger, which we suggest? And I suggest most of the time you press confirm because then you're probably gonna end up with something that works as expected. Now we have this fade to black button here and I wanna open vMix so we can see as I press the fade to black button, we are in fact enabling fade to black. Now, this is unfortunately one of the things that feedback um, is not, where vMix is not feeding us back information about whether fade to black is active or not. So we cannot show you for sure if fade to black is, but as I press it a second time, you can see that it's disabled up here. Going back here, I want to do something else now on the button just next to, and see, I'm still listening. By the way, this listening mode is not something we suggest you have enabled all the time because that does require a lot of resources from the system. So it's only for configuration. And as we press it, we see that another user button is now recalled from the UI here. Now, in this case, I wanna do it slightly different. I would like to just change the behavior to something vMix specific. And we have one called vMix, let me see, shortcut. It's actually the, the last one, vMix trigger shortcut. And in this case, we just need to tell it a letter and a shortcut number. So if I press here, I could um, type in that letter and also the shortcut number, shortcut number. but I first I want to go into vMix and just give you um, a, the list of shortcuts that we have um, to, to choose between. So if we go into settings, shortcuts, you see that we have um, on F2, there's something that is, looks uh, pretty good. This is play. And uh, it's also cool because on the play, we have an icon associated with it. So there's an image inside vMix and we will also read that image out and put it in the display as you'll see in a moment. So F2 is the shortcut we want to use. Let's just exit this, go back to reactor and see how we can configure it. Now this, um, the, the parameter list from vMix has the short for the shortcut action that we are using has a number associated with the shortcut. So what we really need to do is to find F2 and we can see this is associated with 81. So this is something you need to know. Maybe one day in the future, there'll be a nice drop down here, but right now we don't have it. And that means you need to go to the parameter list, find F2, know that this is 81. Up here, you would probably choose F2, but already now you can see that in the display, let me just put F2 here. It says F2 because I typed it in as the letter or the label. I have 81, which is the shortcut for F2, the number according to the list. And it even pulls out the thumbnail from inside vMix and puts it into this one. And I would be able to press it and play back whatever it plays back. So this is how easy you can actually configure your switcher configuration for vMix with the user buttons added by simply listening to the triggers and assigning functionality inside the configuration tab. 
don't get distracted by all the layers and all the other things you can also do in here because you can really get lost in so detailed configuration. And it's not for everybody to do that, but there are certain things that you can easily do, especially if you have this listening mode. And by the way, now that we are here, it's pretty cool that you can toggle simulation mode and actually as you, um, let's say that we uh, navigate, let me see how we navigate. This is different from Windows to Mac and so on. But actually, this is a simulation of your panel. So if I if I select input number three here, it's the same as pressing this button. If I select it on the panel, it's the, it's also happening in here. So you see that the simulation simulator, which you also have in full screen in this view here, is really a reflection of your physical panel as I'm operating the panel. It's updated in the web UI. As I'm changing the web UI, you're seeing that the panel is updating as well. I'm not touching the panel right now. So this is cool. Why? Because sometimes on a remote distance, you would like to go and manipulate what you would otherwise have done on the physical panel. That would be if your operator is away or if for whatever reason you are not able to attend your controller. Before we end this video, I want to show you guys who are still left as viewers, probably the engineers, I want to show you a little trick, a secret pathway to awesomeness underneath. If you press and hold the camera page selector, you'll get into the engineering menu. You find that feature on a number of Skyway panels. In this place, you find access to the IP address. You can see what project title you're using, the name of your root layer. You have a uptime counter. You can see the uh, sleep timer in information like when does the panel dim, when does it go to sleep. You can change the pan, tilt, zoom and focus directions by these buttons. Just press them to easily invert them and so on. You can adjust the, the brightness of this place on these buttons. So that's uh, just super cool to know that we have this engineering menu. And now this is your reward for hanging on this far. If you press the exit button, you're back to normal. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found inspiration to how you can run your one-man band. In this case, it's Bird Dog Cameras, vMix, but you can combine it with many other devices. On social media and on our YouTube channel, we are posting other integrations as well. So make sure you subscribe and thanks for watching.